Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I will show you how you can install a 35 onboard computer for your Land Rover Discovery or Land Rover Defender. This device is very useful since you can obtain a lot of information from the sensors that send the data to the EQ. So if you have a 35 Discovery or Defender, stay in this video because I will show you how I have installed it in my car. And remember, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to show you where to buy this device. I found the onboard computer on a website called Binaul. It is a small company located in Poland that is dedicated to providing software and electronic solutions. One of the projects that we can find is an access system for the canteen of a school, but I think that for this video we are not interested at the moment. On the other hand, we can find the onboard computer for the TD5 engines. As you can see, it explains all the functionalities that the device has. Don't worry, because when it comes to the unboxing, we are going to see everything that this device offers us. On the website, you can see two models. One with a small screen, which we could acquire with the old or modern PCB and the other model that has a large screen, but we can only acquire with the old PCB. There are no differences at all in terms of performance and functionalities compared to the modern PCB. Since it's a board with SMD components, we can see that the size is reduced. The truth is that I was keeping an eye on this project for a long time, because previously there was no way to buy this product until a year ago the manufacturer opened an online store to buy it. It is called Binaul Shop tell you that the manufacturer sends anywhere in the world. To give you an idea, I live in Spain. The shipment took about three weeks to reach my house. Besides, it is not very expensive, around six euros it cost me. Ok, so I'm sure that at this moment what will interest you is how much this device cost, because I'm going to tell you that it's not a quarter of that the nanocom cost. For the version with the small screen about 35 euros. For the version with the large screen about 45 euros. And if we add the shipping cost to that, it stays approximately 50 euros. So what I did was buy it and wait those three weeks for the package to arrive. And this is the result. We are going to do the unboxing to see what has arrived. Ok, so we are now in my laboratory and we are going to see what's inside the box. Well, as you can see, the package comes very well wrapped. With this paper bag and bubble wrap to avoid damage during transportation. Ok, so this is the device. And first we can see a LCD 2004, the LCD module. And behind that, the main board. From the front part, we can see all the components of the main board and if we turn the device around we will see the tracks of the electrical circuit. For this moment many of you who knows a little bit about electronics will have recognized the circuit. We have right here the Admel 328, the same integrated circuit that uses the Arduino Uno and next to it the 16 MHz crystal clock also the same clock that uses the Arduino Uno. For this reason, we can say with enough security that this device has been programmed with Arduino. 
Also we have here the 12 to 5 volts DC converter and also we have here the pins to connect two external buttons to navigate on the LCD menu to see the information and the connector to power it at 12 volts and the car line connector that we will have to connect it to pin K of the EQ of our car. An instruction manual is also included in the box where the function of this device are indicated and how we have to make the connections with our vehicle. Now we are going to check the features. Ok, so the first parameter we can see is momentary fuel consumption that tell us the fuel that is consumed right at the moment. Fuel consumption from engine start, driver wish which I guess is the average fuel that the car uses so if I'm wrong please correct me idle fuel injection which is the fuel that the car consumes when it is start but not accelerating we also have total fuel injected from the engine start it's not the same as the consumption because this is a value and the other is a relation the current speed but it says that value can be increased up to 30% but it's not a problem because you can calibrate it and the last that is the full temperature that is flowing into the engine ok but this is not all if we turn the sheet we see that we have more parameters <laughs> let me first focus the camera ok so now we can see more functions like the intake manifold temperature the coolant temperature the rpm of the engine the voltage that the EQ is reading the MAF sensor data that reads the density of the air the MAP pressure plus raw data but I don't know what is raw data but MAP pressure is the pressure of the intake manifold and AA pressure plus raw data but seriously I don't know if my car have this sensor also we have the turbo bust that is the pressure that the turbo introduced into the engine Westgate PWM modulation I think that's the signal that comes from the echo and goes to the injectors the injector balance that's very useful since you can see if your injectors are working properly and the last option is throttle potentiometer that you can see the info from the throttle pedal ok in this section of the manual you can see some some information about how to connect the computer into the car it says the voltage that the computer needs to work and also the speed calibration if we go down we can see that we can change the LCD contrast by turning the potentiometer it is recommended to use a plastic screwdriver for this type of potentiometer ok so as you can see we have the connection diagram to connect two buttons into these three pins and be able to switch between the different information screens as you can see we have three pins the first is minimus the second is plus and the third is is the common or ground ok so before connecting the computer to the car it is highly recommended to test it to see that it works correctly to do that we have to find a source that provides us with 12 volts you can use a charger that has the voltage in my case I will use my adjustable power supply since we do not have the computer connected to the EQ the screen will only show initializing I will tell you that now is the perfect moment to be able to adjust the potentiometer and regulate the contrast because once we put the computer inside the box it will become much more complicated to adjust the LCD the problem is that the computer comes without any box or housing to be able to install it inside the vehicle so what I have done is to make this nice little box in Fusion 360 that it will house the computer inside so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you in the video description a link to the Thingiverse file so you can download the STL file and if you are interested then you can print this same box in case you don't have a 3D printer you can always take the design and give it to print in a store on a 3D printing website so the main parts are the case, the lid 
and the button covers. Then aside, although this is optional, I have left a support in case someone wants to put it up. Well, as you can see, I have printed the box, the lid, and the button caps that will provide a better finish. So these are the buttons that we are going to use. They have the long knob to place the cover on the top. The pins are connected in the following way. Those that are facing each other work as if they were a wire. Instead, those that are next to each other are those that depend on the pressing the button. This is another diagram of the button and here you can see better than the pins that are next to each other are the ones that have the function of a button that will only let the current pass when the knob is pressed. So to connect the two buttons into the 35 onboard computer, we will take for example the button to move forward in the menu of the LCD on the middle pin. We will do the same for the button which is used to go back in the menu. And we have to connect it to the top pin of the onboard computer. Finally, we would have to connect the common. What is the negative that appears marked as G and D or round? To do this, we will take the button below and the pin that is next to the pin that we have just connected, we will connect it to the pin of the computer that marks G and D. And we have to connect the pin from behind to the button above, to the pin that is next to the one that goes to plus. <laughs> Well, in my Defender I am going to install it in this part of the dashboard because it will look very good and it will not cover my visibility. What I have done is make a couple of holes and then put a couple of screws here. As the grip was not very good, what I did, but I forgot to record, was to put a little amount of silicone to get a better fix. Brands like Patex or Thaste that have high strength and fast drying silicones are a good choice to fix in place, so if we ever have to remove it, the silicone can be removed without any problems. Once the silicone has hardened, we can place the computer inside the box and its lid. As you can see, the lid has no way of being fixed by tabs or screws because of the fact that I did not want to make the box bigger. For this reason, what I have done is to place a silicone strip around the gasket, so when the lid is placed, it remains sealed. Be careful that you have installed all the LCD screws, connected all the wires, 
and the button covers prepare and place it on the buttons so that once the cover is in place you don't have to open it remember that once this silicone harden it becomes very difficult to remove a piece so always check two three forty times before placing something and this is the result as you can see it looks pretty good the good thing about it is that it is a height that to see the information you don't have to deviate too much the vision from the road besides it doesn't cover the visibility of the windshield for that reason I think this is the perfect place for the Defender models well first I have to tell you that the installation can be done in two ways the first way would be to buy a female OBD connector respecting the following diagram Connect positive, negative and the caline wire in the corresponding positions. In this way it would be enough to connect it to the OBD port of the car to make it work. In my case, when doing the electrical installation of my car, when I changed the dashboard I lost the OBD connection. Therefore, what I am going to do is take the caline directly to the corresponding pin of the EQ. So, as you can see, the wire that went to the pin number 18 of the EQ, it has a flesh pink color. So, I'm going to solder it to this brown wire that it will push through the underside of the car until I reach the dashboard where I have the onboard computer. So, I'm going to show you how I did it. Remember that this is an example. So the last thing we have to do is to connect the onboard computer into the car. So to do this we have to connect the 12 volts pin of the onboard computer at 12 volts from the car contact. For this we can splice the connection with the yellow wire that reaches the car radio. This will only turn on the computer when we start the car. We will also have to connect the negative wire to ground it would be enough to connect the wire with any metal part of the car or with the negative wire of the radio finally we have to connect the wire that we have passed to pin K of the onboard computer and now it's finished as you can see it works perfectly we are shown all the information from the echo and if we use the buttons 
you will see that we can navigate between the different information screens. So what we are going to do now is move the car to check that the car's speedometer works. So we put the computer on the speed screen and we will see how it works. As you can see, it works perfectly. In addition, it shows the speed with greater precision than the original speedometer of the vehicle. I think it is an essential device for any TD5, and that for about 50 euros, I think that it is very well worth it. So I hope you like this video. If so, please share a like on this video and leave me your comment to know what do you think. If you have any questions, please leave me in the comments below and I will answer you as soon as possible. So here is today's video, I hope you like it and see you in the next video, hasta luego!